Hello, everyone. Welcome. Just give people a second to join in. Hello. Hi. Hi, Gati. Hi there. Hi, Jan. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Christine. Good morning. Yes, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever it is. I think on this call, we're certainly covering most of the world. Great. Um, so I expect that there may be other people who, who join us, but in the interest of not keeping people waiting, I think we'll just uh, dive straight in. Um, so thank you very much for joining us at the seed session, Belonging, Your Nature, Your City, at the, the Nature of Cities Festival. Um, and as the title suggests, the focus of this session is on the concept of belonging and the role of nature or the role that nature can play in this. Um, and we understand that concept uh, of belonging to be something that is very, very individual and um, very diverse across uh, different people. Um, and so throughout the session, we really want to lean into the idea of, of belonging as being a very personal experience, um, a very natural experience, and, and to be open to hearing and understanding different experiences of, of, of other people. Um, a quick note on who we are and, and why we're organizing this session. Um, my name is Jennifer Dunn, and with my colleague uh, Dominic Register, who's also on this call, I work at an organization called Salzburg Global Seminar. We are a strategic convening organization founded in 1947 to challenge current and future leaders to shape a better world. Um, and on the work that has brought us to this session today, we, uh, we partner with World Urban Parks and AIPH um, among, among a selection of other organizations. And we have people uh, such as Gavin, Timothy, Scott on this call who are representing those organizations. Um, and the idea for this session um, the seed session today came out of a program that Dominic and I ran uh, in September and October last year as part of Salzburg Global's annual Parks for the Planet Forum. Um, and the title of last year's forum was Parks, People and Public Space. And over the course of the, the weekly meetings, weekly online meetings that made up that, that forum, we discussed the themes of loneliness, belonging, community cohesion, safety and climate resilience. Um, and looked at how public space and in particular parks and green space can be used to support positive outcomes in these areas. Um, but also what happens when the opposite happens and uh, people are pushed out of these areas there are and an exclusion occurs. Um, and this kind of over the course of these meetings, the group who were convening um, sort of decided they wanted to do something that empowers people to feel um, that natural spaces or, or nature spaces in and out of the urban context are, are theirs, and um, but also that those that nature is a part of them, um, and that led us to the session today. Uh, we wanted to sort of begin a conversation um, with people about how they, they feel about these issues um, and and to hear other people's experiences. Um, we definitely want it to be enjoyable and, and fun and very informal, um, given the sort of the nature of the topic, but also the fact that it's very much a, a sort of, for us at least, a beginning. Um, and so now I'll pass over to Gavin White, who will speak a little bit more about the concepts that we're going to cover today and also how we conceived of, of the idea. Thanks very much, Jen, and, and very nice to meet all of our newcomers here. Um, I really uh, feel like it's a privilege to be a part of this group, uh, and I'm excited for the discussion today. Um, my name is Gavin White. I'm the director of planning and projects for a company called River Life in Pittsburgh, the United States. Uh, and I also volunteer with the Climate Change and Resilience Committee of World Urban Parks, which is how I got engaged with this group. Um, this Parks for the Planet forum that Jen just mentioned brought together practitioners from around the world. and and their diverse perspectives really made for a rich and exciting discussion. I think they'll do so again today. Um, and that discussion really made apparent to me, at least the sort of diversity of belonging and what it was we were talking about. So, so we puzzled through in, in a series of discussions what belonging meant, uh, especially for urban dwellers and, and how urban parks and, and green space at their best 
contributed to these various kinds of belonging, or, or at, as Jen mentioned, at, at their worst, could contribute to a sort of opposite feeling of, of loneliness or a lack of cohesion. Uh, we, we talked about belonging to our city, to our, to our neighborhoods, to our parks, to our place. Uh, we talked about belonging to a community and also about belonging to nature and, and to the wild and to the planet as a whole. Uh, we learned that some belonging can be better than others, that the sense of belonging could be inclusive of, of all backgrounds and all abilities or, or exclusive as in, you know, I belong to a club and uh, this group might bar or even and denigrate others. Um, I, for one, came away with the belief that urban parks are places that can generate the sense of inclusive belonging better than almost anywhere else. And, and I'm really excited to hear from my co-participants about the way that these uh, feelings of belonging and senses of belonging are built in their part of the world and in their own contexts. So uh, just to keep that brief and keep things moving, I'm gonna pass it off to Sadaf, who is going to speak to you about uh, her experience with the program and, and in her city. Okay, thank you so much, Given. Um, I'm gonna start by saying, um, that spring season has just started in Japan and we all know that spring in Japan is associated with cherry blossom or in local language, we call it Sakura. Uh, the photo you see on the screen was taken during the spring season in 2019 in the park near my house. It is also called Kashiwanoha Park. Um, this is a beautiful green park uh, offering uh, flower viewing during the spring season. Uh, pond boating with an amazing uh, view during the summers and open air and sunny barbecue spaces during the winters. Uh, I never realized that these offerings inculcate a sense of belonging until COVID-19 happened and hit the world. And let me explain how. Because COVID-19 has exposed the, exposed the fragility of our urban spaces and how, we, how they are um, this designed. Um, amid the pandemic, I couldn't see many people in the streets or I didn't hear enough. Um, I mean, I didn't have enough uh, social interaction with people. Um, while going out in the main city center, I only saw built structures or buildings and I realized that they were not something I belonged to. Um, that is when I reflected on the way we design our urban spaces to guarantee belonging in order to ensure well-being um, because the sense of belonging is the key ingredient to warrant well-being. Um, in this scenario, the only way to feel belong to the space was to go to the park and spend some time with nature, see birds and see fishes in the pond. And that is when I realized that humans connection with nature is crucial to inculcate the sense of belonging. And uh, this connection can be human to human connection or human to nature connection. And nature includes living beings and it can be animals or plants both. Um, I would say that nowadays in the developed world specifically, our urban spaces are resilient to disasters like earthquake and typhoon. But if we regard uh, COVID-19 as a disaster, I think there is still a need to address the social impacts of such disasters and make urban spaces resilient to um, disasters like COVID-19 as well, especially in the context of belonging and well-being. And uh, now three points to ponder is the first one is there's a need for green spaces in urban areas. The second one is that there's a need for more human to nature connection to ensure the sense of belonging. And number three is that there is a need to nurture and simulate human connection uh, to the nature um, through urban planning and design and to make urban spaces resilient to disasters affecting sense of belonging and well-being. Uh, and with this said, I will hand back to uh, Given to, uh, and because this is what my reflections are. Uh, based on um, my observation in, in my space where I live in. Thank you.
Thanks, Sadaf. And I think for these for this section, we'll just keep it moving right to the next participant. So Scott is up. Hey, it's so great to see so many of you colleagues here. Um, I'll be brief. Um, no, I won't. I'm from the South. It takes me 20 minutes to say hello. Um, I shall try to be brief. Um, I think if the, the comment from our group that's really stuck with me and it came afterwards uh, came from the author, Barry Lopez. And I don't know how many of y'all are familiar with Barry Lopez, one of the, the greatest writers, I believe, our generation. And in his, as he was passing away toward the end of his life, he gave a series of podcasts um, on variety platforms. And the one theme he kept coming back to that's really stuck with me and the Salzburg's work we did last fall was the thought of contradiction. And his counsel to us wasn't the most pleasant or easy to hear, but there was so much truth in it that relates to our relationship with nature. And that is this. Uh, the next 30, 40, 50 years are going to be a time of intense depression. If you are even somewhat sensitive as a person, watching a million species go extinct, watching the impacts of climate change accelerate, watch our urban centers, which while on one hand are incredibly dynamic creative centers, um, also have an underclass that we all struggle to serve and drive by in many respects every single day. And his challenge to us, I believe as urban parks leaders, was how to live within that contradiction, acknowledging it, but defining a beauty in it. And where that relates to our work, I believe, is in the creating of community. The image in front of you there is from an art installation I helped facilitate last year on the banks of the Ohio River in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, this was an artist who we asked to respond to the water uh, with a series of these light installations that individuals could then walk through. And the intent here uh, was to use art to bring the art community together with the outdoor recreation community and let nature speak to both of them in their own way. Don't say a word, let the exhibit lead the way and see if we can create space for togetherness and maybe even a little bit of new discovery. And I use this image as a metaphor because I believe firmly now more than ever before that our job as urban parks, green space, accessibility leaders is probably to create stages where people can find each other and find their connections. We're gonna be the ones that don't necessarily put them together, but we curate the experiences where folks can authentically respond. And I like to believe that if we do the work right, and I think this image shows it doing it right, is that you create the opportunities and avenues for people, urban residents, to find some peace, um, find maybe some togetherness in a way that we couldn't program. And, and I think that's really beyond the architecture, beyond climate change, beyond stormwater management, all the things we do, it's these connections with land, um, in these nearly sacred spaces and sacred moments, if I may be so bold. Um, that's where our most important work is gonna be done as we help humanity in some small way, um, live with these difficult elements of contradiction that are gonna shape our future. Hi, um, evening everyone, uh, Anastasia. Uh, here from Cambodia. So I've actually got um, a picture that I'm sharing here from Siem Reap. And this is part of um, Angkor Wat uh, Archaeological uh, Park. And we're quite fortunate in a sense that we can visit this on a daily basis and walk around the parks um, whenever we feel like it. And I think we often forget uh, to take a minute in our lives to pause what we're doing, breathe and realize that we're surrounded by history. Um, footprints of generations that have left their memories in nature. Um, and to me, nature holds so many stories of the past, the present, that sometimes we just need a moment to listen, to connect uh, and recharge. On some level, you know, I, I find nature um, somewhat like the guardian to our, to our sanity and existence. Um, and 2021 in particular for me and my family, um, was quite challenging, as I'm sure it was for, for many um, people out there and families out there. But it's really taught me that time is quite short. Um, and being in Cambodia, the effects of climate change are so surreal um, with all the impacts that we're seeing on a daily basis um, that it's just re-emphasized the fact that we need to be closer to nature, that we need greater collaboration, um, that we need greater resilience uh, within our communities.
Thank you. Well, hi everyone, it's good to see you. Uh, well, I am um, based in the city of Merida, is the southeast part of Mexico. And I took this picture in the past summer. And flamingos are a really, uh, you know, a good part of our culture and obviously are related to our heritage and our original people here, which is the Mayan culture. And in the past two or three decades, we really, you know, seen this decreasing in the population of flamingos and all the people were really sad about it. And I think the main question was, uh, what, what is happening with them? And obviously it was so clear for, not for many people, but everything was about that we expel them uh, for their own ecosystem and everything. And I took this picture, uh, obviously in the same moment that we, you know, uh, face this crisis with the COVID, and we started to see uh, this return of the flamingos in this city of Progreso, which is our main port. Uh, and all the people in our city were, uh, were you know, so amazed about uh, the return of the birds and of course, this beauty that they bring to our ecosystem and the landscape. And uh, I think my reflection here is about how we really can uh, transform things uh, by, you know, uh, education and knowledge. I think one of the main things that we need to really work with in the future is how we can educate uh, the people in our cities uh, to really increase the sense of belonging. Because uh, as I uh, said in my statement, you cannot love, uh, you know, anything that you really know, do not know. So, um, I think one, one of our challenge here is really work with education in the future so we can really, uh, you know, spread the word about the importance of our uh, landscape, the parks, the green areas and everything in our cities. And really mostly in the emerging countries and in emerging cities, try to change the reality of our uh, environment, the nature and the people. Uh, and I think the only way and the only path is uh, through education. Thank you. Audrey, would you like to share something? Or are you preferring not to? Hello, yes, I am here. And there comes my photo. I would like to share something. I've got a few images of that's okay. I didn't add them to the slide deck, but if I can share my screen, um, can I do that? Yes, you should be able to. Let me know if you can. Excellent. There you go. Got that. And then I need to do. There we go. Okay, good. So I'm not going to take long, certainly not my three minutes, but I put together a few um, images that represent my, my, my past my sense of belonging I believe your past shapes your preferences and it's those sort of things that we look for in our landscapes that we both design and seek um, so I'm with the International Association of Horticultural Producers very much connected with plants this is an image of where I first grew up in the back of beyond in southern Zimbabwe I didn't have any boundaries to my landscape as a child um, moved within the country, so always had a very wild space to live in. Always was great in the outdoors, um, always out exploring. The photograph on the right is one that delights me. You all know of the group 880, um, with 880 cities, should be with cities that are, or landscapes that are fine for children of eight and people of 80. That's an image of my family climbing Mount Nyangani, which is the highest mountain in Zimbabwe, with me at seven and my grandfather at 70. Flowers and plants have always been part of my lands of my life, even when we moved into town. So we've always been surrounded by beautiful flowers, beautiful gardens. And then moving to this country, I've had to 
become familiar with the manicured landscapes rather than wild landscapes and recognizing that they are part of a different culture and part of a different climate even though my preferred gardens parks landscapes are still those that are wild this is Amstelfian Park in Amsterdam which is a designed landscape and it is absolutely exquisite it is so cleverly done likewise Stourhead which is a national park landscape in the UK, which most people would think is a natural space, but it is still designed. So just to finish, uh, the sense of belonging um, that I'm trying to convey here is a sense of connection to things that we're familiar with, a sense of things that resonate in our hearts and are part of how we have, um, have grown and grown to love nature. But the final on the bottom right, that is a streetscape of the city nearest to where I live now, which is Bath, which is very much about we cannot see a connection and a belonging to plants without that same connection and belonging to people. And all of our parks and landscapes need to connect not just our love for nature, but our love and our connection and our sense of belonging to people and how that can change depending on how our lives change. So I hope that's been not too personal, but too it, but vaguely interesting. So I shall stop sharing and thank you for the opportunity. Fantastic, Audrey. No, and not too personal at all. That was <laughs> what we're looking for today. And uh, Luis Camargo, I think you are the last of our speakers today. Okay, thank you, Jen. And building up on what everybody said, because I think during the work we did, uh, you know, we found a lot of resonance in many of the ideas that were shared. I wanted to bring this idea. I think, you know, the sense of belonging is not something that just occurs. It's, um, it's something that, it, that is built. Uh, or it's created and it's created by allowing relationships to emerge. So if we have cities that allow relationships to emerge with nature, relationships that are caring, that are empathic, then we will have a sense of belonging that includes nature. If we have cities that do not allow for this, then we will have an absence of that sense of belonging to nature. And I think this is something really important because when we design uh, educational institutions, the education system, and many of, of the other you know, museums, botanical gardens, we're not really thinking of creating learning environments where nature becomes both the teacher, uh, the learning environment itself, and knowledge. And I think nature has that power of connecting everything we do. Of, connect, of connecting the value of belonging to life and life in a broader sense. Uh, life in a sense, like Audrey was saying, you know, beyond my relationship to others, other people. It also opens a window into my relationship with myself and into my relationship with other species. So ultimately nature is the canvas where, where we can build that in sense of interconnectedness and sense of, of interdependence that is necessary for us to act in such a way that we can respect and build a life where all life can thrive. And this is fundamental. So I think uh, in order to create sense of belonging, we really need to incorporate in learning and parks and other institutions in cities, cities of nature for learning in such a way that we can inspire and connect information and knowledge with the senses and experiences with emotions and realizations and that we can fall in love with purpose fall in love in such a way that we can become really you know that we can belong we can belong to an extended community of life in our planet so this is the reflection i wanted to share with you guys Thank you, Luis, and thank you all of you for sharing those those thoughts. It was fantastic to hear from you all, and I think yeah, falling in love with with life is a really good way way to to finish those sentiments. Um, 
So what we want to do now, since we're a slightly bigger group and we want to give everyone a space to share their own thoughts and ideas is I think we'll go into some breakout groups so we can be in slightly smaller groups. Um, and we're going to just, we have a selection of questions that we kind of wanted to base the conversation around. Um, the first is just allowing everyone to share, uh, who, who hasn't had the chance to share, to share any similar experiences along these veins that you have of a specific place or um, that you might have felt belonging or, or have had these, these thoughts sparked. Um, and then we uh, also have the question, is there anything common in these, in these um, experiences that people have shared? Are they place specific? Um, we can also um, look into how this feeling of belonging manifests itself uh, physically and also in the way people uh, then behave. Um, do people have a right to belong? Um, and how can marginalized groups feel that spaces belong to them? Um, and how can various groups or communities feel they share a space if they're potentially at odds with each other? Um, and how can we, as a, as a community interested in these issues, gather a wider range of experiences on, on the issue of belonging? Um, all these ideas are in the mural board. Um, if anyone has not used mural before, it is a um, collaboration platform. Um, which if everyone would like to click on that link now, you should be able to access it as, um, as a visitor. Um, and essentially you will see this big board. I'll maybe just quickly share my screen so that people can see it. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. And yeah, and so you can see this big board here. You can zoom in and out of the board and wherever you go on this board, if you double click, you will get a sticky note, which you can change the size of, change the color of. And if you write inside the sticky note, the sticky note is the shape you can type. Um, and so you don't have to use this if you don't want to, but we appreciate that some people prefer uh, typing to speaking. So this is just a different way for people to gather their ideas. Um, and yeah, you can just work in there. Um, if we thought we'd maybe go into breakout groups for about 20 to 25 minutes um, just to be in a in a smaller space and then we'll come back together and continue the conversation um, all together if that works for everyone. Uh, so I will open the breakout groups and you should all get an invitation to join a group. Hello everyone. Welcome back together. Um, I hope the other group had a conversation as 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 inspiring and and thought provoking as ours. Um, and so, for the last kind of twenty five minutes, we just wanted to kind of have a bit of a report out, share the main themes that were coming out of our our groups, um, and then just see if that leads us to any any thoughts on sort of what what each of us as individuals or, or as a group might like to do next or if that is sort of just just leaving it there for today um dominic shall i turn to you or or, or timothy to, to share some thoughts out or someone else from your group tim do you want to i feel as though i've been talking a lot so Dom, if you want to go for it i'll follow you maybe um, I felt like we had a really brilliant conversation. It was fantastic to learn so much about um, different experiences. I think we, we were building towards something really, really interesting at the end about um, how different different countries' experiences of nature are, are, in, are in a very different space in the way in which advocacy for nature is happening and the role of educa education programs to help young people develop an appreciation or maintain an appreciation of nature um, is, is not something which is happening evenly around the world. Um, and there's lots of kind of opportunities for, uh, I think, not knowledge exchange in, play, in forums like in fora like this um, that can support that process. No, no one has it quite right 
Um, yeah, but I thought, and Anastasia, what you were saying, just when we got, um, when the breakout room came to an end, um, was really powerful and important for, um, you know, for all of us to reflect on and take forward. Um, and then you know, prior to that part of the conversation, we, we'd sort of been exploring different ways in which experience is a nature of such an important part of identity, both in individual and collective identity, and how much it's a part of our, our sort of shared history, as well as, um, as well as our individual identity and history. And Louis um, Camargo had introduced a really interesting idea about cellular, mem cellular memory and how, as we have evolved alongside nature, there is this kind of sense of kinship um, which is deep, deep within our very essence or being, um, which we have been at risk of losing in urban environments where you're more detached from nature. Um, it, was, it was a brilliant conversation. I could happily spend the whole 25 minutes just repeating the great things that other people said. Um, I don't know, I mean, Tim or anyone else who's in the group, if there's any, any other highlights that you'd like to bring out? Anyone from our group, please go. Feel free to share. Maybe I, I would just add a final reflection from, from what Dominique was just saying is that even though there is differences everywhere on, on advocacy and access and, and relationship, uh, one thing I feel is that nature is what's common to all of us. So within the multiplicity and diversity we have around the world in every expression, there is one thing that is common that we are all nature and we are all part of nature. So maybe anchoring to that, you know, that, that planetary truth, which is maybe one of the few planetary truths that, that exist, is, is a powerful way of connecting differences. There's something really, I, I, after the experiences of the last couple of years and the idea of, you know, is there when different, when so many different communities and societies have experienced something as, as, as negative and traumatic as the, as the pandemic, that the opportunity that, that then exists to create empathy and points of contact between different communities where it perhaps didn't previously exist because we've been through this shared negative experience. And I think what you've done there, Lewis, is brilliant because it, it looks for something much more positive which is a point of contact or a part of a universal human experience that can then be used to build connection across fractured and divided and polarized um, communities. So it's a brilliant note. Great. Yeah, I think maybe just to one last thing, you know, I was really inspired by two points that were made and Jan, you know, mentioned in her experience that she, you know, had done quite a bit of traveling around the world. And when you land in a new place, you, you are often, you know, thrown off and not understand the nature that is there. It feels, you know, different to where you've come from and different to what has formed your sense of belonging and identity. Um, and she put it really well by saying that, you know, what helped her to adapt in those situations is finding one, one area or place or, or, or thing that inspired her um, that she could see love in, uh, you know, an aspect of nature and build a mosaic around that. Um, so I think that was really, you know, great. And then not contrasting, but I think building on that, Lotta came in to say that she, um, you know, regardless of the fact that nature is, is so different around the world, there is still this common, as Dom was saying, this common understanding of, of nature as, as home, you know, bringing us back to a sense of, of belonging, regardless of where you are. And Lata used the example of putting your feet in the ocean, you know, regardless of what country you do that in, you, you're still feeling that, you know, that connection and that grounding. Um, and then just to end off, Luis had a really powerful sort of way of, of bringing that together and saying, when we ground ourselves and imagine ourselves, you know, transcending to a sort of point at the middle of the earth, um, in that way, we can look at any nature around us, you know, as part of the planet, even as being the same, as being connected all as one. Um, and I thought that was a really powerful yeah, thing. So. Thank you all for the discussion. It was great. Fantastic. Um, I have to say, having spent 
nine being a Brit that spent nine years living in a landlocked country, the whole finally getting to the sea thing, I very much <laughs> resonates with me. Um, yeah, and we in our group, uh, just a few the headlines for us, I think uh, the, the idea of nature being home um, came out as well. And, and Gitty shared those those sentiments of feeling a bit out of place when you are in somewhere that has has different nature and new nature that you maybe didn't realize you had become so attached to to what was what was your home um and I suppose some of the the top things that came out and then maybe others could add some detail we talked a lot at the beginning about the idea of of sort of safety and lack of fear being one of the the the, the sort of necessary ingredients for feeling a sense of belonging in nature and that that kind of feeling like you you can be in a in a space without without danger um and then what of course creates those conditions um we talked about ownership and vitalia gave us the the term of psychological ownership um so rather than a sense of not necessarily ownership in the in, in the contractual sense but really being able to just feel like something belongs to you and that led then on to a, a lot of our other discussions of how what are the different mechanisms we have to create that, um, particularly when a lot of the ways our um, cities and countries and so on are designed are excluding people from from certain groups and what kind of um, you know conversations need to be had and what other things need to happen and be fixed before we can begin to, to think about people belonging um, in place. Um, and so kind of uh, the idea of of our societies really um, needing healing for, for a lot of people and that many of the systems we have are, are pushing people out. Um, so while you know education systems, health systems and so on can be creating this kind of exclusion, then um, we'll always be, be experiencing the, these problems. Um, yeah, and maybe some, some of the others, Gavin, I don't know if you want to add some things to that. I know we had a, or Audrey or anyone else. Yeah, I'll just add because I think it ties nicely to the other group that, you know, this idea that we're all connected by nature, that that we've all been through a trauma and that itself sort of connects us is interesting. I, I really appreciated Vitalia's comment about needing to be radically honest about those things. I think it's very easy to sort of oh, let's focus on the good. And certainly that is important. But if we don't, as Jen just mentioned, uh, highlight some of those inequities and those challenges and be honest about our traumas, both personal and, and societal, uh, we, we will continue to have stumbling, stumbling blocks to that, that sort of planetary connectivity that I love thinking about. <laughs> um, Others, I think I, I was furiously taking notes and now my brain is, is scattered. And so I'd love to hear other thoughts as well. I, I recollect uh, what uh, Sadaf said about uh, uh, the children in Japan cleaning the school before they left to take uh, uh, ownership over the school. Uh, so something you... Uh, maintain yourself or can shape or something like that. I, I think we also discussed that contribute to a sense of ownership of belonging. Great. Um, and so I think, I mean, if there's any other thoughts or points before we head into our conclusion, please, we can have an open floor for the next uh, few moments. I was just wondering if, if you are planning to build something more on this, what we are brainstorming now, because I think it's it's really very central topic because um, I'm a researcher myself. I was working more on nature's benefits for human health and nature connection, which is really turning now. <laughs> Yeah, we had this a bit illusion that more scientific evidence we will produce, more will, will convince people to 
protect nature, but it seems that this hundreds of publications being published each year doesn't make any difference, doesn't engage really people. And now I think there is thinking that we have to work more on creating this direct experiences that involve more emotions and uh, memories and feelings. So I think this research is moving a bit different direction and I feel that by belonging is, is really the topic that this many different sectors of research are coming and this transdisciplinarity is very, very interesting around this topic. So I don't know if you have some plans to, to continue to work on this? We would like to. Um, I think is the, the very honest answer. Um, uh, yeah, and I don't know what, what others are thinking, but essentially this session today was kind of what we took out of the, the previous session we had. Um, and so, yeah, I think we, I, I don't want to speak on behalf of everyone else, but I feel like we, as a, as a, a group of people, um, which we would now very much like to include you all in, um, I think it feels like something that has struck a struck a chord. I'm, I'm repeating myself now um, with everyone, and is kind of, as you say, like a, a a good thread that is pulling the work forward. Um, so yeah, we'd be really open to sort of suggestions of what we might do. Um, Gavin and Tim had had some other ideas about something more uh, tangible that we could potentially produce, and maybe they could speak a little bit about that, about whether or not it's creating some sort of campaign um, that we could get people involved in. One of the, the ideas, of course, we had is how do we gather a wider range of these experiences um, so that, you know, you're not just listening to stories of 20-something-year-old um, men going off into the hills and having a jolly good time camping, and we kind of are, are expanding our understanding of what it means to, to, uh, to interact with, with nature. Um, yeah, so I don't know if anyone else ha has any thoughts on that. Gavin or Timothy or Dominic. Um. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of an irony of speaking about that after that intro, but but I am interested in hearing other stories. And so part of this lesson, this sort of session was uh, we had thought about, you know, is there a video or, or a way to gather more input, these sort of really personal uh, experiences of belonging, uh, you know, centered around urban parks, because that was our interest. But I think nature and all its types uh, would be helpful. And and I don't know that it needs a hashtag or, a, a, you know, a tw TikTok account or anything, but, uh, but some way of inviting anyone and everyone into this conversation about belonging and having something tangible to share with others. And I'd welcome ideas and be happy to participate in, in whatever that looks like. One of the ways in which we discussed that might come to life was through a sort of global campaign um, of sorts and what that looks like would be open to discussion but you know a global campaign where everyone could share their experiences uh, you know maybe through a hashtag or something like that uh, you know in terms of what what nature in their city in their context in their experience uh, do they belong to um, it was just one of the ideas we had coming out of the forum um, that yeah you know was something we had considered and Timothy, uh, maybe it's not exactly that, but today we launched from IUCN this campaign, which is uh, the Storytelling Festival, part of Nature for All. And the Storytelling Festival is a campaign to share the stories of how you fell in love with nature. So it, it has to do with belonging and it can, you know, we can bring it from our community into uh, falling in love with nature, you know, arrow belonging um, and it could be a way to bring this into a broader conversation which is fully relational that's great Lily. i'm smiling broadly because i wasn't aware of that um you're launching this um initiative because i was just going to say you know there's an awful lot of storytelling that we can we can do and that's what you've come up with um 
one of my my things that if if this is going to go ahead and sort of a global campaign and linking with that and the whole aspect of storytelling i think we just have to be very aware of how we choose our audience because within this group you know we are all very much um devoted to bring people's sense of belonging to nature using parks for that. Where do we get our audience that we're speaking to people who don't quite get it yet? How do we get their ears um, into our, our, our range and our, vo- our the range of our voice? So I think that would be a very, very strong part of it, um, how we would then achieve impact from doing that. Audrey, I agree, and I would think is more than getting their ears, is getting their bodies into nature, and then creating the silence for nature to do its magic. Um. Okay, fantastic. So I think we'll definitely um, keep keep thinking and keep planning, and we'd love to have. I'm not sure if I can get your contact details, but if I, if I um, feel free to share your emails with with us or or connect to us in in other ways. Um, and we'll be sure to to keep you involved depending on what we do. Um, in the interest of time, I think I'll just hand over to to Timothy now uh, to to start us us wrapping up uh, in the next five minutes. Thanks, Jane. Um, and I'll be really brief and you know and give the floor to Dom to do a, a proper conclusion. But it didn't feel right to do you know to start a conclusion in stuck in my bedroom with cupboards behind me. So I've moved outside. You can see the magnificent jacarandas behind me. It's at the expense of the bad lighting on me, but I hope it's, it's yeah, at least good for you to see. Um, I, I mentioned to my group, I grew up in the exact same town that Audrey shared in her personal experience. And that's actually where I'm based right now. Um, so, you know, I think it has given us Zimbabweans a, a bit of a romantic sense of what belonging to nature is like, because that has, you know, Audrey described it so well with having no boundaries. Uh, we are fortunate enough and privileged for sure to, you know, be in a place where nature is all around us um, and where our cities haven't developed or nothing's really changed in, in many, many years in our, our very small cities. So, uh, you know, in comparison, so, um, <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, just a personal, very quick personal story that I, I started sharing with the group. But, you know, having grown up here, yeah, I had such a, a innate sense of what, you know, where I belonged and belonging to specifically the Zimbabwean landscapes and the, the huge granite rocks. Um, and when suddenly I left home at the age of 18 and found myself in Cape Town, I think I experienced exactly what Jan was saying in our group, where you suddenly look around and there's a change in in fauna and flora and it's it's all you know very not familiar um and it, it sort of shook up what what my identity meant um and and uh you know what what was holding my identity in a sense um and the pandemic when i was suddenly stuck inside four walls in my house uh in my apartment in cape town with very little access i was on the 16th floor uh very little access to nature and that really just changed my entire perspective. I realized that that yearning for home, um, as Lata called it, that yearning for the nature that formed my identity that was here back in Zimbabwe was exactly where I wanted and needed to be. Um, and that's, you know, just a personal reflection of how I find myself here now. Um, but just, you know, to conclude, I think um, one of the big concepts that I think we we haven't touched on much today, but we spoke, we started to allude to it in our group, and it certainly came up very strongly in the Parks for the Planet Forum, was the concept of rewilding. Um, you know, I think as Jane said, everyone here on this group is, is no stranger to the need to, you know, rewild our cities and bring nature back into our cities. We know why that's important. Um, but you know, something that really struck me and was a, a very aha moment within the forum was when we were, it, it actually came out of some of the discussions we had about what the possible outputs would be. Um, and, you know, rather than having a call to action to cities or, a, you know, another statement or declaration, because there are millions of those right now in the advocacy space, uh, we, we, 
looked at how we might internalize these concepts that we generally apply to the landscape or planning scale. Um, so, you know, I just want to leave you with that thought about rewilding. If we flip and internalize that and personalize it, what does that mean for not just rewilding our cities, our landscapes, our parks, uh, but also rewilding ourselves, uh, you know, bringing bringing back a sense of, of comfort in the wild um, within our own viewpoints, the way we experience the world, the way we experience our cities. Um, and so, yeah, I think as I hand over to Dom, I'll just leave you with that thought and encourage everyone on the call, I suppose, to go forth and be wild. Um, and yeah, I've really enjoyed the discussions today and thank you all for taking part. Dom, over to you. Thank you, Tim, and I'd really like to, to thank you and Gavin and, and in particular Jen for all the work that you did in organizing this session and, and everyone who shared memories and reflections at the beginning and in the breakout groups. It's been, you know, it's been fantastic. And, and it's really clear, I mean, although we are all, you know, the, the converted or obvious candidates for this, it's been really clear how important this topic is for us as individuals and then also for the different groups and communities um, that we're part of. Um, so there's almost, it feels like there is a, a moral responsibility to try and help many more people experience this and, and make that reconnection or get to celebrate the connection with nature and the sense of belonging that comes from it. And I wanna come back to the idea that Lewis shared about it being one of those things which is, a, is common for all of us. So a great kind of uniting point across different populations, different communities, and something which is much needed at the moment. Um, there's a wonderful book by a British journalist that came out last year called I Belong Here. Um, she's called Anita Seti, and she um, writes very powerfully about needing to reconnect with nature after having a um, experience and being um, a sort of victim of a racial attack. And then she goes back into the nature in the north of England where she was from. And the book is her journal of recovery and the importance that nature plays in that. And it's incredibly powerful and well worth reading. And I think would resonate with a lot of what we've been talking about today. Um, the final thing I'd like to say is really an ask of everyone that you know we all have opportunities to bring these ideas, the questions that we used in the breakout groups and, and the theme for the conversation into other spaces. So whether you're involved in other networks or you're convening or you're part of academic communities or whatever it might be, then if you feel it's appropriate and you'd like to take these ideas and this thinking into other spaces, then please use the structure that we had for this or the, or the questions that we used to begin the breakout groups and share them and bring more and more people into the conversation. And whether we end up with a global campaign or something happens organically, there'll be conversations that are worth having. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, for being with us and spending the 90 minutes with us today. It's been fantastic. Really enjoyed it. And I wish you all a very safe and happy times ahead. Thank you, everyone, again. Thank, thank you. you. Goodbye. Thank you. Everyone, goodbye. Thank you all.